Why is the Barclays Premier League looked back with so much nostalgia, so much love? I mean, it was just a bank sponsoring a football league at the end of the day. But in this video, we're going to look at that period of time and why it is so popular. A bit of background, Premier League started in 1992. It didn't have a sponsor for its first season. Then in 1993, right the way to 2001, it was sponsored by Carlin Brewery. And then in 2001, it was then taken over by Barclay Card. And then who changed it to Barclays in 2004. And then in 2004, they changed it to Barclays Premiership, which would take it all the way through 2016, where the sponsorship ended. It's become a bit of like a meme. It's become a bit of like a cult hero thing where people say prime Barclays. If someone scores a long shot or someone does a really cool skill, people say prime Barclays. And it's bringing it back to a time, I think, where people might have loved football a bit more than they do now. But at the end of the day, it's very subjective because a lot of people my age, I'm 25, people say Prime Barclays because that is the era we all grew up in. During that time, I was 10, 11, 12 years old. So we look back on that time really fondly. However, someone who's nine, 10 years old now will look back on this time very fondly, I'm sure. But it does pose the question, is that era of football, say 2001, 2002, taking it to maybe 2013, was that the best era of English football? And we have to look back at what came before it, and that was obviously the 90s era, or we could all call it basically the Manchester United era, the Sir Alex Ferguson era of football, because they just completely dominated, and I think it was two points they were off, winning nine straight titles, which is just an insane feat, and it's funny when people go nowadays, oh, Man City are ruining football because they're gonna win six out of seven, however, People look back at Man United, they dominated that 90s period. But I think also it was the influx of foreign talent coming in. Someone like a David Ginola who played for Newcastle and Tottenham. Players like that were coming in and it was taking a lot of people by surprise and by storm at the time. And obviously I wasn't alive, but yes, they had people like Paul Gascoigne, a very skillful player. Yes, they had people like David Beckham or Ian Wright or Roy Keane. But they're all very English or British players or Irish in Roy Keane's case. However, I think or what I've heard with Gianfranco Zola coming in, with Dapi Ginola coming in, all of these foreign players that brought a bit more flair to the league. It increased popularity for the competition within the country. But I think we have to look back at 1996 because that is where one of the most important managerial appointments was brought in. It was Arsene Wenger for Arsenal. And he changed basically the way football was played in the Premier League, in my opinion. And I think it still goes through today. I think Arsenal have only just changed how they used to play under Wenger. And we can see that because when he brought in the likes of Dennis Bergkamp from Inter Milan or a Thierry Henry from Juventus, because I mean, it was all starting to come together for them because when they won it in 97, 98, they won the double that year, and then they won the league in 2001, 02, and then obviously 03, 04 with the invincible team. But I think the players they were bringing in, like I said, the two strikers, but also players like Patrick Vieira, Robert Perez, Freddie Youngberg, all these fantastic foreign players that it was very different to the Manchester United's where, let's face it, what, eight out of the 11 players were from England, maybe even more. And I think if we do look back at it, the 2000s maybe had the best crop of managers in the world, maybe even ever in the Premier League because Alex Ferguson had not gone anywhere. Yes, they had a bit of a lull compared to the dominance in the 90s. However, they were still winning trophies in the 2000s. And obviously Arsene Wenger was creating an unstoppable team of Arsenal. However, we also look about it in 2004, Chelsea brought in a man who we all know from Porto called Jose Mourinho. And the charisma, the good looks, everything about him just added to it. And it was the rivalry with Wenger, it was the rivalry with Ferguson. And realistically, if we look at it, it was those three teams that carried that league in the 2000s. Yes, Liverpool had Rafa Benitez, who they won the Champions League with and the FA Cup with. And they had a few title charges. However, it was the big three, really, that were the main selling points of the league. Because I think nowadays, it is the way it is. The Premier League is a huge brand. It's one of the biggest brands in the world. And despite Pep and Klopp and Arteta and all these managers having personalities, they somewhat have to be ambassadors of the brand. Look at Pep Guardiola. He gets dressed up like a complete idiot sometimes to promote City's merchandise. However, it felt back then that people just had free reign to do whatever they want. Mourinho just did not care at all. I don't want to speak about it. And apparently, I listened to an interview with John Terry recently, and he just said Mourinho, he didn't have to answer to anyone. He didn't have to answer to Abramovich. But I think that adds to the nostalgia because Jose Mourinho nowadays, on social media, he is an absolute icon, especially the younger generation, because he got so much of a personality that we don't see today. Alex Ferguson was just that moody, strict, but excellent manager that just had so much respect in the league. He had that fear factor that I don't think any manager has come close to since. And then obviously Arsene Wenger was 
the tactician, the absolute genius. And like I say, all three of them were just the perfect storm. But it just does link to money as well, because obviously with Barclays taking over, so much more money was pumping around the game. And because of that, like I said, you see better players come across. And if you look back to the Champions League, England, especially in the last stage of the 2000s, dominated that competition. Liverpool were in it twice, Manchester United were in it a few times, Chelsea were in it, and it just pushed it out on a global stage because at that time, the English team were very good, of course. Everyone knows the golden generation. How didn't they win anything? But you combined having maybe the best players in the world being English, and then also having the rest of the best players in the world, basically, in the Premier League at the time. Other than really Real Madrid, Barcelona, AC Milan, maybe Inter Milan and Juventus, all the best players were playing in the Premier League. But I think at the time, what the Premier League did fantastic back in the 2000s, it was marketing. Marketing the Premier League in the 2000s was absolutely brilliant and stars were just everywhere. It was complete mayhem with the amount of superstars that were in the league. Of course, Cristiano Ronaldo, they had a gem in that sense. They had the best player in the world in the late 2000s playing for the best team or the most popular club in the world. And we have to remember this is a lot of it pre-social media. So nowadays, obviously, brand is a lot more important to players and rightly so because they can make money off it and it's the world we live in. But at that time, players, and there are a lot of robots back there, players seem to have somewhat more of a personality because if they said something out of turn, they weren't going to get cancelled, they weren't going to get completely ruined, they weren't going to lose sponsorship deals well, a lot of the time. And it did allow players to have a bit more personality. But that's not to say everything was great back then, because I think nowadays, from a fan's perspective, players are a lot more relatable because I think they try to be. They try to be more relatable so the fans don't kick off at them more and they don't see so out of touch. I think back in the 2000s, they were so out of reach. It was when players were starting to earn 100 plus grand a week at a club. You know, mediocre players were earning that. They just seemed completely unrelatable to the average Joe. And I think nowadays they do that a hell of a lot better than they did back then. But to look at the marketing, we've got to look at something like match attacks which were a trading card game, I believe started in 2007 maybe. There were other variations of that beforehand, but that was a game where you would collect each player, there'd be 100 clubs, so it'd be special cards of the players with 100 ability. I don't actually know if anyone played with them, but it was a great card collecting game for us, you know, when we were 10, 11 years old. And I think something like that added to it, because obviously Panini stickers have been popular for years and years before the Premier League. However, I think match tags just added a bit more to it. And I think also the match magazine or the match of the day magazine, all of these things as a kid just let you immerse yourself in the culture of the Premier League. And you could argue maybe nowadays because there's so much content readily available at your fingertips that it might make it a bit less important to you. But to go on to that actual football, it has completely changed from even 10 years ago now because VAR is a huge thing that is divisive. It might not even be divisive anymore. I think people are firmly against it and it's just ran completely wrong. Next year they're having the all made offsides, which I personally think is gonna completely change it and will make a lot of people happier. However, nowadays, it just takes a lot of enjoyment away from the game. Stop it, because you're ruining football for everybody. And if you're at a game live, it's just terrible. You're just waiting on a screen to see if it's offside or onside, and it's just ridiculous. But back then, obviously, it was a lot better because there was not technology like that. And there was less interfering in the game, which made it flow a lot better. And that's not to say VAR couldn't have helped back during the Barclays Premier League time, because obviously, it's not like a Darren Bent's goal against Liverpool when it hit a beach ball. It's ridiculous, how did that stand? But goal and technology is clearly a fantastic thing that they brought in and only an idiot would say they wouldn't want that back in the day because it's just such an obvious thing. So that is a positive of today's Premier League. But unfortunately, a lot of the criticism comes out one man in particular, and that's Pep Guardiola. Obviously, Pep Guardiola dominated with Barcelona. He did fairly well with Bayern Munich, and now he's just absolutely smashed out of the park with Man City. Obviously, Man City, with the oil money and how many players they brought in, hasn't helped the cause, but I think people argue that Pep Guardiola makes football boring because, one, he's too good, which isn't necessarily his fault. I mean, he can't just be crucified because he's so good at management. But I think people argue that the type of football that he plays has made the Premier League less exciting, which I don't necessarily disagree with, but I don't think it's the full extent of it. Because, of course, 90% of people would love to see a 40-yard long shot going to the top corner rather than see Jack Grealish hit it across the box and Haaland just tap it in. But on the flip side, I think Man City play arguably the best football the Premier League has ever seen. They are unstoppable. And it is a joy to watch them sometimes. Is it boring? Yes. 
But if you look back at Barcelona, people go, well, they played fantastic football. I remember watching some of those Barcelona games in the Champions League, and it was the most boring things. They had 90% possession, and they might win 2-1. And I also think it is Jurgen Klopp as well, because obviously he has created such a dominant Liverpool side in the last six, seven years. The bar is raised so much higher nowadays, whereas in the 2000s, you could win with, what, 80 points, 85 points? Because nowadays, you pretty much have to finish with plus 90 points each season. So we've come close to winning the Premier League. I mean, look at Arsenal last season. They had a fantastic year and they didn't really come close at the end of the year, which is tough because do you argue you don't want these top managers in because they raised the bar so high? It's a bit of a stupid argument. At the end of the day, if you look at it, Manchester United won three in a row in the 2000s and Chelsea won two in a row. So it wasn't like every season they were seeing a different player win the league. But in my opinion, the reason people look back on the Barclays Premier League with so much fondness is one, because a lot of it was when we were younger and it was more pure at that time because you were more innocent and everything. But two, I think it was social media because social media nowadays is so good for football. However, it is so negative as well. And that is the balance that people just can't seem to find. Of course, like we say, it's great that people have a platform to voice their opinion nowadays. There weren't fan channels back then unless it was a radio station or it was Fan Zone that used to be on Sky Sports, which used to be fantastic. They weren't hour-long podcasts just debating two players for the whole series. Rightly or wrongly, it was more qualified people being on TV talk about football. And I think nowadays it's fantastic because people who might not be able to go to a university or might have not gone to a private school and got loads of connections, they can get on TV and that is fantastic. However, I think people had a bit more credibility back then. And also the popular TV show is something like a Soccer AM. Soccer AM got cancelled, what, last year? But it was in its absolute prime in, in my opinion, like the mid-2000s. And I think all of this just added to the hysteria of the Premier League. But there is a reason why players, in my opinion, are a lot more conservative nowadays because people always remember, I think it's 2007 goal of the month, and there was about 10 goal of the months that could have won goal of the season for the last five years in the Premier League. But let's face it, and we're all to blame nowadays, if a player has a bad game, if he tries a new skill and it doesn't come off, if he takes a long shot and he goes in row K or something, then we're all the first ones to go. He is absolutely terrible. He should no longer play for the club and everything like that. Look at Darwin Nunes at the moment for Liverpool. He's having a bit of a rough patch, but he had a great start to the season. People forget that and think he is an absolute donkey, should never play for the club again. People would have thought that at the time, but obviously they didn't have Twitter to voice their opinion on it. They didn't have YouTube to criticise him every day. I look back on it with nostalgia and joy, and obviously we forget the bad things about that era, but it was fantastic. There were so many good teams. Mourinho, in my opinion, made that league for the, what, four years he was in it. And I think when Klopp leaves next season, and I'm sure Guardiola's gonna leave soon, I think it's gonna go in a bit of a lull for a bit. And it's good to look back, don't get me wrong, and I do think it was probably a better league back then than it is now. But let me know what you think. Let me know if you love the Barclays Premier League, if you think it's better now, it could be. If you could like this video, that'd be fantastic. If you subscribe to the channel, that really helped me out. And yeah, thanks for watching.